To support the show, visit us at patreon.com slash retro AM. Get early access, bonus episodes, and access to our growing collection of premium podcasts, where we cover other JRPGs like Terranigma, Parasite Eve, and Star Ocean. Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. I've been watching a lot of Gundam lately. You bought a gun? I recently got done watching Zeta Gundam, right? And Zeta Gundam came out in like, what, 80... 86, yeah, maybe? obviously, duh. 80-something, and here's my war documentary also with giant robots is kind of how that, 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 that show is placed. It's very somber. It's very sad. It, it talks about the war. It doesn't have a lot of, a lot of anime tropes, and et cetera, uh, but it does work with limitations. The l- limitation being is that, like, Whoever greenlit the show said there must be a space battle, or there must be a robot battle in every episode. So it's like how the Power Rangers must assemble their Zords. Yeah, every single episode. And it, it, was, it was jarring to me because, like, Gundam doesn't really function, modern Gundam doesn't function like that. It's, like, usually a little bit better paced. Like, I mean, they're, they get in the robots a lot, obviously, but, like, sometimes there's a, a, a battle, a skirmish between the same, you know, the, the same factions of characters over and over again, like, for, for five episodes in a row, and there's no real outcome to that. Yeah, you know it's Final Fantasy VIII podcast, right? Yeah, but I'm getting my question. It made okay. me want to ask you a question. Yeah. Like, with, with me thinking about this, right? So, Gundam was made with the limitations of there must be a space battle in every, every, uh, every episode. Final Fantasy, like, often doesn't have limitations other than, like, what, you know, budget and stuff like that. Do you feel that Final Fantasy VIII specifically was made with any limitations? Going through those background interviews, this was Square's boldest period when they had all those, you know, Einhander... Uh, Tobol, they paid Dream Factory for Tobol, all the kind of weird offshoots of games. And then all those interviews said that they wanted to invent new systems so the programmers didn't get bored. Oh, yeah, I I remember that. The most cynical way to read that is because they're going to work 100 hour weeks. Let's at least have them work on new stuff to keep their interest. Like they thought innovation would be the selling point as opposed to the quick cash grab of making the same game you made over again. It's almost like their mandate was like, let's recalibrate what a big budget. JRPG is. Right, and we're still going to put Chocobos in there. There'll be a Moogle card. Yes. <laughs> you know, it'll retain 20% Final Fantasy generational knowledge, but pass it on. But we have to future. put cars in there. There's the limitation. Cars. Yeah. You must have a car because we're going to do this giveaway. Yes, put in this, a car. This Toyota, what was the Toyota shit bag? Was it? It's an Echo. Toyota Echo, yeah. Toyota great. shit bag. <laughs> Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Uh-huh. <laughs> Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs, chapter by chapter, beat by beat. This is season three, disc two, Final Fantasy VIII. My name is Chris. I'm joined tonight, today, as always, by Eric. Hello. Once again, JRPG stands for Jesus Role Playing Game. <laughs> yes, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Jesus is always the one who kills God. We are also joined tonight by the Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live on Discord at patreon.com slash retro AM. You can join in if you want, patreon.com slash retro AM. We're also joined by the fake net, our post-production AI companion, and Deep Sea Mammal that you swam with in Dolphin Park in the opening training level of Wave Race 64. Dolphin Park. Initializing fake net. I guided the wave races to safety and we swam together in the blissful afternoon sunshine. It felt perfect. It was the greatest day of my life. Hey, fake net. Hello, Chris. Wave Race 64, good or bad game still today? Hold up. I played it in the last month. It is still, like, the water physics in that were really ahead of their time. The music is still wonderful. The racing, eh, not so good, but that game has definitely has a I'm on vacation vibe. You want to just relax? Good. Play that Dolphin Park level. It's great. Wave Race 64, by the way, also a sequel. To? There's a Wave Race Game Boy game. Really? It's one of those things no one ever remembers. I really wanted to get, in, get into Game Boy. I just play some Game Boy. Your EverDrive has Super Game Boy experimental yeah, firmware. I gotta, I gotta update it. Yeah. So, Eric, we're not Laguna anymore. The dream is over. The dream of... The dream is dead. The dream is dead. The dream, like school, is dead. Of patrolling town and killing monsters and having a crush on the barmaid. Now barmaid? We're gonna, barmaid um, Gladiatrix. Barmaid Gladiatrix, Orla, ColonelCross.com. Yeah. Uh, so... Yes, the bartender, the, the, the bar owner. We have now entered something... I, have we played an RPG yet where we don't wind up in jail? Um, on this podcast 
we in Chrono Cross, you go to a jail. I don't think Glenn ever, was in jail. Glenn, we were, I, yeah, I was in the jail cell briefly when I inspected it. I'm talking about have you been behind bars, either imprisoned or via exploration? Have you visited a jail? Parasite Eve, we were definitely visiting. Actually, you skipped the jail room. <laughs> as oh. funny as that is, I went to the interrogation room close yeah. enough. They violate rights there all, all the same. Yeah. Did we go to jail in Terra Enigma? I think we did. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in one of the castles. Yeah. So, yeah. Jailing and sewers, right? Yeah. Sewers yeah. and jail. But that should have been the podcast alternate title, <laughs> Sewers and Jail. But we're yeah. having a new song playing right now in, in D District Prison. You know what the song's called? Uh, it's called Jail. That's right. It works too. The song's crazy. It has weird piano keys banging for no reason in the middle of it. We're like, I just pictured Uimatsu just going, fuck it, and then just slamming his keyboard. Yeah, this. It feels like maybe uh, it should be called uh, Jailed in a Horror Movie, kind yes. of. You know what I mean? Like Creepy it, Jail. Yeah. I mean, all jails are creepy. All jails are horror movies, Chris. Yeah, of course. The That's screen true. is completely Shit. black. Yeah, somebody's wondering what's going on. Yeah, obviously it's Squall who is dead, right? Yeah, Squall's dead. He's he's in hell like Goku, mm -hmm. and he's got to fight some demons to get Goku out. Goku and Mayor McCheese. Yes. The words, where am I, appear on the screen. Four lights start twinkling against the black screen. Gradually, the picture comes into view, and the lights are revealed as ground lighting inside of this dank-ass metal walled and floored prison cell. Cool. Kistis, Selfie, Zell, Renoa are sitting on the ground. Who was wondering where they were? I think it was Zell. 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 Yeah, because I think Zells are like our, our avatar here, yes. right? He's like in the process of doing that shit where he opens his eyes. Yeah. Like waking up and then Kiss just gestures to him and says, welcome back, Zell. Yeah. The dream world again. If <laughs> if I didn't know that I was I was in jail because the music is called Jailed, I would think uh -huh. I was on like a space freighter yeah. or something. It's, it's definitely got... like where they keep Riddick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely got... The, the, actually, the whole, the whole D district jail in general has the vibe of like a musty star wars location yeah definitely oh. it is used space yes zell confirms that's where he was selfie then asks how laguna is doing and zell's like i don't know i didn't see him yeah i was ward yeah that's where you put it together like shit dude what if zell was ward and ward was out doing ward shit so zell then confirms this he says it's not like i know everything about ward but well you know laguna and company went to that central place and got into a real fix right because he's now a 60s detective mm-hmm Everyone shakes their head. After that, Ward's been all alone. He's been working in some sort of prison-like place, and he's bored out of his mind. All he wants to do is be fighting alongside Laguna. Yes. Chris, how does Zell know this because Ward cannot talk? Does he see his thoughts? I think so. I think okay. I, I think that's part of this, right? Because, I mean, I, when we're playing as Laguna, are we also are, are we role playing Laguna? Or are we are we role playing the viewer of Laguna? I gotta say, viewer with subtle influences, fairy-like yeah. influences, right? I just, yes. I never want to read another man's thoughts in my entire life, so I hope he doesn't have that kind of interiority. Yeah, that's good. Ward also seems to be suffering from uh, dipshit separation syndrome. Oh, where, the thing like, that Kiro solved. Yeah, well, the, yeah, he's been separated from. Yeah, he's been separated from Laguna for so long that he doesn't know how to derive meaning from his life because Laguna was the source of all all meaning. So. Janitor at a prison doesn't seem like... I mean, Ward's definitely the honking bruiser of the group, but yeah. is this deep cover or is this just the work he got? Ward definitely has some skills, right? Yeah. But, but maybe, I mean, maybe he's not developed a way a, a way to communicate and maybe Proper he's being... Application. Ward is being discriminated against because he can't speak. I see. And thus he's had to take a job that he is overqualified for. I mean, he's got a... He's good at throwing harpoons. I mean... Yeah. He, he should at least be able to be a fisherman. Yeah, instead of fishing turds out the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everyone is then silent for a moment and Kista says, so what is this we're experiencing? Which is a great question. Mm -hmm. Zell handles this question poorly and says, how the hell should I know? Zell then stands up and we're Zell. I walk over to Kistis and speak to her. Zell sits down to do this, but I am behind Kistis. So he's basically in the bobsled seating position behind her. <laughs> yeah, every time you go speak with somebody, he gets in this, like, plop. He sits sit. down like Jay Allard at that Microsoft conference. <laughs> anyway, Kistis wonders... Not many people are going to get that. Well, hey, look it up, man. Look up Jay Allard Xbox conference. You'll fucking find it. Yes. Anyway, Kistis wonders what happened to Squall. She's curious if they brought him here, too. He's dead. That's what happened to yeah, him. Yeah, Squall's dead. I do the same shit to Selfie. I get behind her. She says, well, since we're prisoners, shouldn't we be trying to break out of here? Yeah. Just Self dumbass rogues gallery here, man. It is, but like, I think as we're going to learn, like, Selfie... Stone Cold Killer. Yeah. <laughs> Se selfie is like, she sees a prison. The first thing she thinks of is, how do I break out of this prison? Even if she's as not violently in it. as possible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she, 
she she goes past like a coffee shop. She was like, how can I kill everybody in there and get some free coffee? <laughs> free coffee. Yeah, just straight up murder. Don't pay for it. Kill them. Oh, Renoa shit. confirms that Zell said Ward was working in some kind of prison and that he was from Galbadia. Renoa is laying down some obvious hints that my big boy just will not understand. Yes. So I was like, yeah, he's a soldier. Then he stands up and knees Renoa in the head, but the game does not acknowledge this heinous gesture. I run off screen and nothing happens. I go talk to Renoa again. Renoa, still hoping Zell gets it, says, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't you supposed to be Ward in the dream world? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, just now I was. I wonder if we're ever going to get some answers to the logistics of this shit. No. Renoa then asks Zell if this room looks familiar. Zell thinks this question is stupid. But then the dramatic irony is lifted and he stands up, stomps his foot, and says he knows this place. Mm -hmm. Everyone listen up. This is the prison that Ward works at. He's a janitor here. There's so many rooms just like this. It's got to be here. Chris, there are so many rooms just like this is cruel foreshadowing for the content of this dungeon. Yes. Very much so. This dungeon has... Like five screens total just repeated? Yes, but like... 13 floors. So, yeah. yeah. Renoa points out that there is a prison for political activists in Galbadia. I doubt my girl's ever done hard time here, though. Also, she finally says out loud, this is the place where Ward works. Right here, where we are, I'm sure of it. Is this some shit that couldn't get localized properly? Because we just said the same thing like nine times in a row. Yeah, it, either that or we're, we're just trying to drive home how dumb Zell is, I and guess. Reno uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Kiss issue the teacher. Teach him problem-solving skills and saying his thoughts. Critical thinking. Kiss is like, yeah, no shit. It's no surprise we're in jail. We attacked the sorceress, you moron. Yeah. Chris, how did our heroes get busted? How did that go down? Where's Squall? Where's <sighs> Irvine? Irvine well, at least was in that tower, right? Renault was in the tower. Irvine and... Well, and Irvine and Squall were on the float. And Kistis and Zell were at the gate. To drop the gate. Wasn't somebody with them? Renoa, oh, that's selfie, right. And selfie. Yeah, and selfie, yeah, right. And selfie. So Irvine got out of this. I mean, we know later, but right now it's like, shouldn't Irvine have been busted too? Yeah. Well, Irvine, uh, that's a good point. Like, are you suspicious that he's not here? Did he turn them in? Did he turn coat? Yeah, that's a good point. Renoa adds, we went up against the president. We'll all be sentenced to death. Uh, Renoa, the president was dead before you did all this shit, but go off queen. <laughs> yeah. Kisses notes the president is no longer in charge. Yeah, that was my opinion, the player too, Eric. I yes. thought that. Yes, yes. Uh, Renoa says that Galbadia is now in the hands of the sorceress. Or Kista said that, I'm not sure. Everyone wonders what's going to be happening to them. Zell forcefully sits down, crisscross applesauce, and gets in a thinking pose. Zell, too, wonders what's going to happen to us. He also wonders, where the hell is that guy Irvine, just like Eric just did? And where's Squall? Did the sorceress, and then he gulps Chris. Squall's dead. Final Fantasy VIII is treating Disc 1 like it was last week of a serialized television show, recapping everything up to this moment. Yeah, uh, this whole prison sequence, the whole thing... I hate it. It's mm. all bad. It sucks. It's a bad... I remember going to prison and never being like, spoilers, you can't ever return to this location. So I was like, rubbing my hands like, ooh, unique content. Yeah. Get to experience it. The only good prison is D-Block and Xenogears. Yes. I will, I will die for D-Block. It fades to black. The music stops. Now we're in a single cell. We see a ghost. Yes. Squall wakes up in the hexagonal cell that people in Solaris sleep in. Yes. Honeycomb. Got a cot and a shitty toilet. Yes, finally, a toilet. Final Fantasy VIII has toilets. This is so exciting. The first toilet. Do I have to make a thing? No, you, you can't count toilets until there's two. Okay, you're right. Because there's one, so you don't have to make a thing. Well, I mean, we're already counting chicken wusses, so we can't really, but we just, we, we had speculated on whether or not the scheme had toilets, and now it does, so. I love toilets. I yeah. love battles. He wonders, where am I? Squall also recaps the last episode of Final Fantasy VIII and says, I challenged Adia, my wound, no wound, how? Oh, you're dead and you're dreaming. Do we ever, is this ever explained in the game? Do you remember? I don't. That he doesn't have, he suffered a massive Ice 3 chest wound. Just, yeah, I don't think so. Hmm. He goes on to say, Galbadian soldiers surrounded them and Cypher was there leering down at him. Leer, good word. Squall says out loud, damn you, Cypher. Squall then falls forward on his knees off the bed. So Squall is being attacked by his own memories now. Mm -hmm. And I'm reminded of the only Bill Burr joke I've laughed at. When, you know that thing where you're in the shower and you relive your worst moments? Yeah. He says, uh, his wife asks, because he starts screaming when he's in there and he does that. He's like, oh, I'm just screaming out some memories. <laughs> I'm just I'm just getting them out. <laughs> Which is what Squall is doing here. Yeah. Uh, then we get some CG. CG cut scene. Mechanical machinery extends a platform to Squall's cell, later screwing itself into the structure. 
A host of security mechanisms make ratcheting sounds, then it cuts to a wide shot where a crane device extracts the entire cell. Steam power. The, the crane rotates, lets off exhaust, and then hauls the entire cell vertically through a central corridor. Also, this thing has headlights just like a car, which I think is hilarious. D so this is the same thing as Solaris, right? Like these honeycomb cells that can be plugged into different... I mean, this is the solitary confinement area, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know where the original inspiration for all this all this was or if... Or it was just two yeah, separate like, ideas. Is honeycomb cell solitary a trope that you can just move and drop <laughs> I don't know. people off of when they blaspheme it, the regime? I, I know this. Does this predate the Matrix? Yeah, Matrix was March. Well, I mean, development does. Matrix yeah. was March 99, and this is fall. It reminds me, I don't remember which Matrix it was, but it reminds me of how, like, how they stored the bodies in the pods and stuff like one. that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Music, jailed resumes, and we're back in the cell with these four lamos. Yeah, it says floor seven we see some like cops hanging out on floor seven like d just as the cg ends oh really yeah i must have missed that they're walking into into the cell that we that we're in but you can't like it, it's just a brief flash selfie is startled and asks what that loud noise was the door opens and three identical looking cops with greaser haircuts walk in brandishing billy clubs somebody thinks i don't like him at all the lead cop has a name yeah his name's mean guy like all cops. Yeah. <laughs> he says, it's the sound of your friend being tortured. Zell takes a step forward, challenging the police he's about to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> they all pull guns and point them at our party they, like police. Are they Uzis? I can't tell. I don't know. Mean guy starts yelling at us. He asks if we understand who's in charge here. I'll, again, perfect cop dialogue. Yeah. Zell stomps and sticks his chest out and says, I'm in charge here, but not really. Mean guy puts a taser to Zell's neck or a gun or something and smacks him. He says, shut up and don't screw around with me. You do understand who's in charge here. Mother believes I am very important at my cop job. Yeah. <laughs> Zell he doesn't say that last line. Z Zell forgets that he's a uh, a killing machine. <laughs> <laughs> right. The cops start kicking the shit out of Zell. Yeah, they cops pistol love kicking him. people in the stomach for no reason. They walk up and both take turns. I'm sure this is supposed to be harsh and dramatic, but it looks hilarious. There are just multiple like body kicking sound effects while they go ham on him. Like I a cartoon. am... I am 100% digesting this entire sequence as c comedy. Yeah. Completely, completely. Renoa shouts. She wants the mean guy to stop. The yeah. Mean, the mean guy is then reminded that he's here to find someone named Renoa. Yeah, he picks up Zell by his hair and says, is there a Renoa here with you? Renoa, who I'm now convinced is a beautiful idiot, promptly says, I'm Renoa. Yeah. You'd think that they would have some sort of like prisoner processing system here, here mm -hmm. at D-Block, D-District? Oh, like I don't think so. Because they're all idiots. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're all they're all cops, right? These aren't like processing secretary. Like, I, I believe don't they have a, like? I mean, this is this is this is like part of the state. Wouldn't the state have some sort of regulation to to? I mean, process and for people that try people? to assassinate the sorceress, probably. But yeah. I think they just paddy wagon these fools and then just tossed them in here without much thought. I mean, there was a riot that night, right? Like there was yeah. multiple celebrations of hypnotic people. Like maybe the sorceress, since they were all under hypnosis, commanded the the mean cops to just jail them immediately. Yeah. We'll get to it later, but I'm less convinced that the, the sorceress actually did any mind control. Mm. I, th I think it's just people that were hungry to be dominated, ruled upon. Yeah, Renoa ID IDing herself here is another sign of her privileged upbringing. Yeah, she willingly speaks with the cops. Uh -huh. And well, to be fair, Zell was getting the shit kicked out of yeah, her. She true. wanted to stop that, but she also like ruined any strategy they could have had by mm -hmm. just immediately volunteering herself. Yep, it's like in uh, Colonel Cross when I think what Starkey or somebody kept giving the game away. Yeah, yeah, Starkey rules all the time. Zell lifts his head and said, what are you doing to Rhinoa, you bastard? The second cop then kicks Zell in the ribs. Kissed his begs him to stop. During this whole thing, the third cop rotates to point his gun directly at whoever is talking. Did you notice that? No. I noticed my different talk, the cop just pointed their gun at them. Oh, that's a nice touch. I, I guess they're using the same uh, rotation algorithm they used for... Uh, for Rain. For Rain or whoever, because yeah. there are a couple times when that happens. Point too. gun at speaker. Yes. Also a cop move. Rhinoa says, stop, I'll go for some reason. Kistis, Renoa's mortal enemy. Remember, Renoa never heard Kistis' apology earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Says Renoa's name. Renoa looks over at her as the two cops have their gun barrels aimed inches from her skull and say, I'll be fine. Let's go. And then they all walk off the screen and it fades to black. Mm. Squall cell. Noise. The whole cell shakes and then the door opens. <laughs> Who walks in? It's Cypher. He barges in. He God damn it. Immediately calls Squall pitiful. Despite, I think, like yesterday or like two days ago, he was... He was owned by his by Squall yeah. in a duel. Like we beat him in a boss we battle. We beat him. Yeah, but he's if you like, consider like morning practice a draw. Then then, then Cipher is oh one and one. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. Like, yeah, the, the tie. He, he has no wins on this, so Squall, I don't know what's going on here. He does this, Squall's on the bed, and he leans over on top of Squall, who's like in his knee, he's on his knees in the field party vomit position. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He picks him up and manhandles him for a bit, maybe like by picks the collar. By his hair. The I hair, his yeah. Hair, yeah. It's hard to tell. He tosses Squall up against the wall pretty violently, like there was some force that was he demonstrated. Throw, yeah, he throws him by his head. Yes, like, I picture Squall being pretty, like, fatigued here. Maybe he hasn't had any food since the big old sorceress battle. Yeah, then something comes in that I was not prepared to see. Squall, or Cypher does a villain swipe, then what walks in? A, a, he yells, take him away. A thing, a little, a, a bipedal red 13 comes in. Yeah, I've got two fire creatures. It's wild. I, I did not expect to see these things this early in the game. Also, I, it took me a while to remember what these things were. Chris but... forgot about <laughs> like everybody else in 99 forgot about Dre. True. New music, Rivals. New sequence too, we're in the torture chamber. Yes, we're in a room where Squall is being crucified because Japanese creators love... They love crucifixion. ...crucifying people in fiction. If this uh, were an American torture scene, they would definitely be in an electric chair. Yeah, Or that shit they put the Simpsons in for that's like electro, electrolysis therapy. Yeah, exactly. You know uh, this is a kill room because there's a drain on the floor right below him. Oh, Always yeah. be suspicious of floors with drains. The rest of this place looks dirty as hell. There's one additional mean guy cop off to the side. Cypher is facing Squall head on and he says, I'm sure you can imagine what happens now. Chris, mm-hmm. were there, were, this is nine months after Metal Gear Solid, right? Yeah. Did what we're about to play inspire that or is, have the people being tortured by electricity in games for a long time? <laughs> hmm, good question. Well, people have been tortured in, in, in film and stuff for a long time, but I, it, it, that, that's really but good. Solid Snake was crucified too, right? Kind of, he was on a table. He was on a table, but yeah. he was still arms like banded out in the yeah. cross position. Yeah. The Jesus pose, if you will. Yes. Squall struggles in chains. Yeah. You can, you can hear the chains going around a little bit and, and ask Cypher what he wants. Great question. It is a good question. Cypher says that Adia demands to know what seed is. I, which, dude. I mean, obviously there's, there's going to be some, some things we've got to figure out about what that question means. But also, like, why is Cypher in charge of this? Like, he's not a professional torturer. He's not from the Dick Cheney school. He just joined yesterday. Like, I've heard someone say, what would happen at the Capitol riot if the people that did it were competent? But the answer to that is, no one competent would do that. Yeah. So that question can actually be answered. But is the, are we answering that now? The is Cypher? the Cypher's the, like, he's, he's the smartest dumb guy? <laughs> yeah, maybe, I guess. Because he's, he's suddenly in charge of all these, all these men that are older than him. I mean, they're cops, dude. Yeah, good point. Like, he's got a uniform, God, he has co- the, the gun blade. The cops would fucking hate being commanded around by a guy with a gun right. blade. They would fucking hate that shit. That's how we, that, that's how we solve the problems in the United States. We just, just we just put, we just take, like, if you can't get rid of the police, then you might as well just Give put, Alex Jones a gun blade? No, just put somebody, whoever, you, you find, like, the, the most righteous person that you can, somebody who lives for justice and truth, and give them a gun blade and oh, put I them see. in charge of the cops, and then the cops will fucking hate themselves, they'll all quit. Give Tom Hanks a gun blade? <laughs> A gunblade typewriter? Um, <laughs> with type gunblade? Fuck. Uh, uh, so, let's talk about this question. Tell me what a seed is, Adia demands to know. It's like, that's the question you're going to ask? Yeah. It's like it's like selling me Comet Pizza. is not really selling pizza, is it? Yeah. Fucking Jesus Christ. Squall thinks to himself, a code name for Balam Garden's elite mercenary force, seed combat specialist. He's Textbook just, he's, definition, he's ding noise. Not, yeah. He did the same thing when they were trying to figure out like what the next thing in the playbook was when they needed to go to the nearest garden or whatever yeah, like he decided right. it from the book the rules of acquisition then he asked aloud to cypher don't you already know cypher then owns himself slightly and explains that he's not a seed because he's dumbass and he can never pass the test yeah he supposes that there must be some sort of secret that you get when you become a seed oh my god dude this is what the sorceress like this is this is the top priority it, it makes sense if you think Cypher is a dumb boy and she's given him a very easy task to yeah. complete that he think is very important. Because mm-hmm. so I doubt the sorceress knows Squall has any significance now, right? He just took a shot at her and like, this keeps Cypher busy for 10 minutes until she needs a right-hand man for her next float parade. Yeah, it could be. Or that we were deeper in the cons- whole entire conspiracy than we, than we actually knew. Yeah, this could be everything or nothing. Yeah. Squall then delivers the line that everyone delivers in these exact circumstances. He says, there's nothing. Even if there were, you think I'd tell you. To this, Cypher tells Squall he's on his tough nut to crack list, Richard. Yeah, do you have a tough nut to crack list, Chris? Uh, uh, do you have a nut cracking list? I don't have a nut cracking list. I, d- I don't really keep too many lists except for this new like notebook where I just write random shit down. You literally, that's your, that is now called your nut cracking list. No, I, I haven't labeled it. I haven't it is now a nut cracking list. Yeah. Composition journal. Okay. 
And then Cypher says, didn't think you'd talk that easily. A squall replies with the harshest, most disrespectful of comebacks. Jeez, I'm honored. Cypher then says, so here's a little something for you. He snaps his fingers and the cop guy lowers a switch. Yes, he does snap his fingers and the and the next Nintendo uh, Switch game is presented on the of Nintendo course. Direct. Yes, just it like is Mario Golf Strikers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's not the name of that game. Uh, could be. Then Squall is electrocuted with blue electricity. He screams. This will continue infinitely until you forward the dialogue box. Unlike Siphon Filter and Gabe Logan's Magic Taser, Squall would never ignite with sustained electrical pressure. Yes. I go make a sandwich and come back. Squall is still taking it. Mm -hmm. I hit the X button and it stops. Then Cypher says, even if you don't talk, others will. The instructor, the little messenger girl, or that chicken wuss. He wouldn't even last three seconds. Hit it. The final fantasy eight. Chicken wuss count. Seven. Cypher villain cackles as Squall realizes his friends are all captured too. And they're here. Cypher is like, oh, you bet. But since I like you so much, I thought you should go first. I was hoping you'd be there, Squall. So, how do I look at my moment of triumph? So he lost, right? And the moment of triumph is now when he's electrocuting him? Yes. Chris, is Cypher only doing this for Instagram likes? <laughs> no, Cypher doesn't care. But remember, Cypher oh, only cares like about the one thing yeah. that he's about to discuss, right? My childhood dream fulfilled. I've become the sorceress's knight. Squall then thinks to himself, sorceress knight? His romantic dream question mark? But Cypher, you're just... And then he says out loud... A torturer. Can you imagine if I had you crucified and I had like, I was juicing you with this shit and I said, finally, my dream's fulfilled. I made knights too on my own. <laughs> you did Can it. Can you believe it? And I'd be like, oh, your your romantic dream. Yep. Great. Squall hangs his head like getting all that out took effort. Cypher incensed screams, what did you just say? He notices Squall does not respond and then says, passed out cold, huh? Cypher then gets fucking meta, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> he says, this is the scene where you swear your undying hatred for me. He like, waves his blade around, then raises it to the sky and pulls the trigger. The tale of the evil mercenary versus the sorceress's knight. The fun's just started, Squall. Don't disappoint me now. Then mean guy throws the trigger and shocks Squall again. Mm -hmm. So this is like dazzling self-awareness for Cypher, or is he really still living out that romantic dream? I think he's the opposite of, like, in the last episode we talked about how... Laguna was pretending that he was okay yeah. by patrolling the town, shooting bugs to hide something. But I think, I think Cypher is, is living for this shit. He is, he's in it. Like, yeah. all this is real. Like, he, he, he thinks this is... All of this is real. <laughs> it's really happening. This is really happening for Cypher. Prison cell music jailed resumes. It mm -hmm. opens with selfie drawing cure out of Zell and using it on him. That's what I have too. I, 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 I don't think that's how the circle of life works. No. I think you eat the antelope and then you shit the antelope out. That's and right. And then the, then the grass grows and more antelopes eat the grass. Yeah, right? take a picture of it, send it to your wife. So you, if you're good <laughs> to do this properly, she would have to draw a cure out of Zell's ass, but only if Zell had eaten recently. Yeah, eaten some cures. Is this the only time we see this outside of a battle? As far as I know, like they they rarely contextualize the world for practical purposes. Yeah, but Zell says, "Ow, ow, ow." Yeah, it's not and working. Kista says it's no use. There is a MacGuffin. There seems to be an anti magic field in here. Yes. Of course. By the way, those exist in this world, Chris. Of course they do. Chris, will we ever see an anti-magic field in this game ever again? No, because we have magic and we must use it. Of course. The door opens and a m walks in with a serving tray of food. It trips and throws the whole thing behind Kistis. Excuse me, Eric. A, a, a bipedal red 13. We don't know. A bipedal. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We don't know. It's a I believe yet. it. Yeah. Someone off screen asks what that noise was. A mean guy walks in and says, you again? Indicating this monster has fucked this up before. Yeah. Mean guy then kicks the in the face, launching him backwards. I began to refer to the little red guy as little buddy. For the little rest buddy. Of it. Yeah. Okay. We'll start doing little buddy till they're named. All okay. right. Zell thinks, damn him, that numbskull. And then you can either say, I'll stop him or there's no use. What'd you go with? I went with, I'll stop Hell him. Hell yeah. Because I'm a fucking honorable. You're a hothead. You've got air guys. Go. Yes. What does Zell do? God bless the ring. He stands up, he blesses the ring, and he says, Yo, who do you think you are? Selfie then calls him a big meanie, which I think is a, a term that she's used before. But they stand to support him. Yeah, and, and he tries to take another swipe, and then Zell remembers, of course, that he's a killing machine. He catches the guy's arm like it's just a fucking action movie. Yeah. And then Mean Guy steps back and telling us that we will regret this. Selfie then does a magical girl pose. 
Yeah, Selfie tries to heal that little buddy and he kind of has a seizure, then it fades to black. By the way, speaking of little buddy, these things made me feel like I was playing Final Fantasy again. <laughs> oh, right, you know what finally I mean? a mythological like, creature who's your friend. Yeah, so much has has diverged from the formula, which we've, we've discussed, which I don't think is bad, but, I, I, but th- these are the first, like, you know, weird things. This was my second Final Fantasy at the time, so I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Where's Materia? Are you Mog? Rivals plays, and we're back to the torture sequence. Cypher is about to ask Squall yet again, what is the seed and why do they oppose the sorceress? Squall repeats the dictionary definition of that, and... Is this a thing where cops, like, to manipulate you into making an answer, will psychologically torture you until you say whatever it is they want? Yeah, I mean, it's coercing a false confession. It happens right. all the fucking time. Yeah. I mean, I, Squall thinks about this question, but then an unnamed cop walks in from the back and says, Sir Cypher, which is the first time they've called him Sir. Yeah, this fucking poor cop doesn't have good health insurance and he has to call this 17-year-old kid Sir. Yeah. What a fucking loser. Idiot. The missiles targeted for the garden are ready to launch. Cypher says a Mr. burns ask excellent, and then the guy leaves. Why, Cy- why, why are they telling Cypher this? Like... But it's on the player. It just happened to be also tell. I mean, I maybe like, I don't know. Maybe they told him he had 15 minutes before the missiles launch and he demanded to know when the missiles actually launch. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Cypher's role should be more along the lines of like the sorceress's bouncer and not not like somebody who's actually in charge of all the, the, the military. Yeah, does this mean the sorceress is an idiot? I mean, kind of. I mean, I know, like, we, we understand why she wants Cypher at her side because he's powerful, but... Yeah, you want him as a lead henchman, not lead policy strategist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he shouldn't be in charge of, of the uh, of the torture He should in the interrogation. He should not be in charge of the missiles. He should be in charge of standing there and beating ass of anybody who, who yeah, approaches. Yeah, that's it. The bouncer. Yes. Thank you. Unlock Cypher, Cypher and bi- the bouncer. Bio... Hi- bio Cypher Biohazard. Dog Street. Sion Biohazard. Cypher says Balam, Balam Garden is to be destroyed on charges of training seeds to oppose the sorceress. Squall can't believe this shit. Nope. Cypher says, it's a pity, really. I grew up there, too. Chris, if you could launch missiles at your high school to destroy it allegedly parody, hypothetically parody account, <laughs> would you? No one's in the building. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not so. going to answer that question. Thanks. Yeah. But orders are orders. And Adias wants it destroyed. Squall chokes out a Nano like Ironhide's about to get shot. Only because it's affiliated with the Catholic Church. Of that's course, why. right. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's that, the only that, reason. That's yeah. my reason. It's a fine building. Yeah. Cypher continues. After the garden's gone, the seed hunt will begin. Cypher begins to walk away, but then looks over his shoulder at Squall and says, I'll be Adias' bloodhound and hunt down every one of your kind. Cypher grabs his chest and nods his head, then turns back and stares Squall down. It'll be fun, Squall. Don't die on me yet. He gets a good belly laugh in there. Then he snaps his fingers one, two, free and tells the cop to get on with the ter- interrogation. This cop's name is Warden. Not Ward. But Warden. Ward I think works. that's his job title, I guess. It'd be hilarious if Ward was the I Warden. I thought the Warden was in charge of the jail. Like, yeah, I, th- I thought Warden was like general overseer, administrator type role, and then like occasionally beating one ass per day. Yeah, and and so I, I feel like Squall should uh, he he shouldn't be the he shouldn't be the one that's pulling the switch. Cipher maybe he doesn't, should, maybe doesn't want his soldiers to dirty his hands. He just wants uh, to be the one to torture. Maybe weird. he gets off on it. Weirdo. Also, he's got a blue armband. Really? Yeah. <laughs> cool. I don't. I I think maybe all these cops do. I mean, they're Galbadia. Galbadia's color has been blue, right? Yeah. I mean, but were they originally red like Caraway? That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good question, actually. Yeah. Um, Fake Net, this will take you five minutes, and the person that controls you will be pissed off about this, but go find a play through the Japanese game and answer that question for me. Thanks. Initializing Fake Net. Nope. Sorry. Couldn't find a Japanese Let's Play past disc one on YouTube. The warden asks Squall if he's ready to talk. Yeah, it's some weird villainous shit right there. Yeah. Squall says he doesn't understand the question, Squall, of course. Squall, you card. Squall's like fighting back now with his words. Yeah. The warden tells Squall not to mess with him. The warden says that Adea says Squall knows something. He demands that Squall, quote, spit it out. Then he pulls the lever again. What is seed about? Talk. So as Squall is frying, he questions if he knows about uh, what seeds is true. Like Squall questions his own beliefs. Yeah. Are we mercenaries from Balam Garden Special Forces? Which is the part where the cop breaks you down, so you just say whatever. Yeah. Chris, is he actually doubting his knowledge, or is this confusion and doubt brought on by the intense physical pain of being electrocuted for three hours while I left my game on? Uh. <laughs> Probably both, but I do think that we are, I, I'm not sure if it's effectively communicated to us, but I do think that we are supposed to be, or Squall is supposed to be questioning everything that he knows. Okay, good. So this is his test of resilience for him, yes. like to challenge his core beliefs. So you can say, you can lie, or you can say, let me die, basically, right here, right? Yeah, the warden crosses his arms in the exclusive arms crossing pose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you can say, just let me die, or I must live. 
Mm, yeah. He wonders what this jabroni keeps asking him the same questions. Yes. What'd you pick? I must live. Me too. Squall spits periods. The warden approaches and Squall says, flower. The true goal of seed is to spread seeds all over the world. Fill the world with flowers. What the fuck? Did you get that? Yeah. Were you making that up? No. I think I accidentally pushed just let me die. Oh, you must have. Yeah, uh, because the warden asks what he said, then Squall says in broken syllables, your breath stinks, then Squall spits on the warden's head. Oh, okay. The warden wipes it off and calls Squall Squall a punk, then tells him he asked for this. The universe gave you that so we would have a different dialogue, I guess. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, universe and fake net. I didn't do shit. He reaches back over and keeps shocking Squall at different intervals, saying, how's that? How you like me now, huh? Yeah, (laughs) I think I should, like... If I go back and think about it, I should have chose to die because, like... (laughs) Isolate that. Well, (laughs) Squall naturally would be a terrible liar when it comes to, like, pulling creative fiction out of his ass. Like, there's no way that anyone would believe him. Bad at improv. He keeps going, too. He he tells the warden that... For your flower thing? Yeah, yeah. He he tells the warden that uh, seeing flowers takes away people's will to fight. The warden continues to mock him and saying that Seed wants to bring peace and love to the world, question mark. He tells Squall that he cannot fool him, but Squall continues. He says they will steal the will to fight, then invade. Then the warden seems to buy it all of a sudden, and he calls in another cop buddy and to come in and watch Squall while he runs out. Isn't the will to fight essentially the subtitle for Xenosaga Volume 1, the will to power? Yeah, but it's in reference to Nietzsche, and I don't think it's anything to do with the will to fight, but I could be wrong, I don't know. Good point. He's a pacifist. Was that how it ended for you? Yeah. Okay, so Squall thinks in my game, good night, and we see the warden's text box on a completely black screen. Did you get this? No. He says, ugh, completely knocked out cold. Hey, you two Moombas, watch him. Oh, you got Moombas. I didn't even get Moombas. I, I got so. Moombas. We so, got Moombid. Okay, well, now we know what those things are called. That was the bleep word. Moombas. Oh, you, I can't call him little buddy anymore. Another Moombas. I'm still gonna call him little buddy. At Music. least that, that one specific one. Yeah. One Moomba. One truth. Mm-hmm. Jailed plays. Initializing fake net. No, it's played five times now. Let's listen to the music from D Block in Xenogears. And we're back in this group cell. Yeah. That Moomba is still face down in here, and Zell thinks, what now? I stand up, and the Moomba has no physics. I walk right through it. Perhaps only Zell can see the Moomba. Selfie wonders what we should do. She thinks if we should just stay here, we'll get tortured for sure. When I talk to Kistis, Zell walks to the other side of the room and sits down. Kistis says we can't just sit here. We have to think of a way to escape. Zell asks if anyone has a plan because he sure as shit doesn't. Selfie then suggests skinning this little guy and wearing him as a disguise. Jesus! The Moomba gets up and runs away, freaking out. Selfie says she was kidding. Chris, is Selfie kidding or is Selfie Eli Manning a stone cold killer? So, yeah, she is. is she, I think she's like 75% serious. Like if they went with her, she'd do it. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, she was definitely waiting to, she was gauging the, the, the response. Okay, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, for sure. Like even Zell says he doesn't think it sounds like Selfie was kidding. Yeah. Kistis changes the subject wisely, saying we can't use magic here, so we'll have to rely on weapons, which we apparently don't have, as Kistis says we had to get them back. Which I always appreciate when you have to go get your weapons back in, yeah. in games like this, because sometimes you just have them and it's funny yeah. to me. Uh, My magic lives in me. <laughs> Zell then has a realization that we wish he would have had, you know, an hour ago. Earlier. Uh, he knows what his weapons are. They are, quote, his these fist o mine. Yes. He suspects that he could do some serious damage without weapons. He gets up, vibrates, Mm -hmm. and then thinks, it's up to me, baby. He's Duke Nukem now. Yep, that's it. Zell addresses the group and says, let me go. I'll go get the weapons back. Selfie claps her hands and says, oh yeah, you worked here as Ward, so you know this place. Zell thinks all Ward did was mop the floors, but he doesn't say this out loud. Yeah. Zell says to leave it to him and tells the ladies to lie down. Wait, what? Yeah, well, huh? What, what are we doing here, buddy? Yeah. Uh, as, as he walks away, Kistis and Selfie lie down flat on their stomachs. Kistis can't believe this shit. Selfie hopes it works. Yeah, this is the trick that they use in every fucking piece of media. The solid mm-hmm. snake trick. Everybody uses this trick. It's, of course. Uh, somebody has diarrhea. Come get them. That's right. Off screen, Zell screams for a guard. He says they need help yelling for the guard to open the door. It's mean guy. He's like, what's the problem? Zell says the women are unconscious. I think a snake bit him. Mean guy can't believe this shit. No, he can because he walks in. Zell punches him in the dick and he falls over. <laughs> Zell says, well, I'm off. Yep. And little buddy wants to come too, right? The Moomba, of course. It raises its hand. And Zell asks it if it wants to go too. 
Never do this. Never take the pet you just meant on the weapons mission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It shakes its head and Zelda's like, okay, fine, don't get in the way. The two scamper off and the room fades to black. Yes. Now we're on floor seven. Little buddy joined our party, victory, victory music. music. We're in some kind of silo or a cylindrical building thing. We're presented with maybe 45% of a circle. Everything is metal and looks completely inhospitable. So mm-hmm. a great jail. Yeah. Of course. I run south and it shoots me out the other side, confirming this place is indeed a circle. I can't see or do much else here, so I walk up the nearby staircase. The prison has multiple floors that look just like this, but there's usually a small barrier between the up and down stairs. Final Fantasy VIII has no jump button, demanding the player spend their time taking the long way around every single floor. Yep. What was the, uh, the science fiction novel that was released i don't know within the last 10 years where people live in silos under the ground i read it a couple of them and now i just i'm just now remembering them uh, it's gonna bother me if don't, you've read a couple of something in an entire series you should remember the name of this I'm just now remembering it exists because people lived in these things under the ground fake net what's the fake underground silo fucking thing chris is talking about initializing fake net. it's called wool and it's written by Hugh Howey. Does it matter? You asked me, so it matters. I don't think it even matters. You ungrateful piece of shit. Net, never mind, don't look that up. I can't believe this shit. She's gonna clown on you for looking it up again. You're not supposed to do that. She'll get upset. Oh, it's called Wool by Hugh Howey. Very intuitive. Why? I'm quitting for the rest of this episode. Wool? Wool. <laughs> There's a reason why it's called Wool. It started as a sequence of novellas and then it became a whole series. I don't know if it was good. Anyway, on these floors, you usually have access to three cell rooms along the way, some of which have goodies in them. Shit, son, I get in a random battle. It's a 1v1 showdown with a GM-52A, a purple mech with cool-ass folded-up back wings. Fucking shit, y'all. Zell is equipped with nothing. <laughs> yes. It does micro-missiles and takes away half my HP bar. I use battle boost and revive myself. <laughs> yeah. So then we get up to floor eight, floor right? Eight, yep. There's a pair of blue soldiers. One is wielding Squall's gunblade. Yeah. And there's other ones standing above a chain whip and a nunchaku. Of wow. What a coincidence. They're just fucking standing here. With our weapons, our pile of goods. Yeah, we didn't even have to go to the, uh, the e- evidence locker or whatever. Yeah. As we approach, they're having a conversation about seed weapons. Then they notice us. They ask if we are escapees. Zell tells them, I'm just looking for Daniel Dallas. That he's here to beat their ass. Actually, he says they're going to reclaim those weapons. As we enter the battle, the soldiers Don't be can't, afraid, please. Yeah, the soldiers can't believe this shit. We take them down very easily. And yeah. Zell calls this a piece of cake, baby. The red guy, our little buddy, dances on their corpses. Chris, now these soldiers have just been knocked out. They have not been evapo-killed, right? Right. Because if Zell had murdered them, their bodies would evaporate into the ether. Yes, like in Double Dragon. Of course. Yes. The screen fades. God, God bless, bless the ring. God bless the ring. Yeah, the screen fades, and we're back into the cell. Rivals Zell. plays. Rivals is playing with Zell. I'm back into the torture room after this. I'm not. I'm definitely not. Did I get a special scene, or are your notes a little go, bit? You no, know, go ahead. Then we're back in the torture room. Music. Rivals plays. Squall, I guess, thinks. Don't hit my face. I think no, that's got to be Irvine. And then the lights come up, and it is Squall. And then he says. He thinks, stop grabbing my leg. Let me sleep. Laguna? Someone tells him to shut up. He screams Laguna's name again. Whoever is listening or thinking questions that name, someone continues to scream Laguna and someone else keeps thinking about it. Chris is Squall in the Laguna dream now. This could be occurring simultaneously to the time that the, the Windhill sequence, right? That's Maybe? what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like, he, like this is his live action dream logic sequence it would make sense because he did wonder where he is and maybe he was literally yeah. wondering where he is <laughs> the lights come on and three moombas are reaching up at squall still on the crucifixion wall he's like uh what i don't understand the moombas then make a squeak noise <coughs> mm-hmm. and seem to be speaking english now they say laguna laguna <coughs> are they speaking english or can squall understand them i think they're speaking the common tongue okay yes they run around like cats when you drop something loud. Then one of them left on the left throws the switch and gets Squall down from here. The middle one places its paw on Squall's forehead, saying Laguna's name calmly this time. The one by the switch screams Laguna's name twice. Squall then says Laguna's name. I'm going crazy over here, Chris. It fades to black. So the, the read here is they smell Laguna on him, sense Laguna thoughts in him. 
sense Laguta blood in him. What yeah. are they doing? It's, it, I did get this scene, or I did at least get the Laguna stuff, but I don't think I got it here. I don't think I got it until everybody else got up there. Weird, huh? It Weird. Pro- it probably had something to do with the selection of I, I would want be to like, die. I just wanted to die, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But you got pretty much that there were, there's no dialogue that there, sounded familiar? Uh, we'll get there in my notes, okay. I, I think, because it, it came a little bit later. You, you still get that those Laguna facts, at least, but it plays out that's slightly That's cool that it actually jub- like shuffles the yeah. sequences like that. Yeah, so jailed plays, right? Yes, we now get a straight-on angle of our gang... Um, the cell our gang was inhabiting. Mm-hmm. And Zell apologizes for keeping them waiting. He presents the weapons. Years and- before Solid Snake would apologize for the same thing. Yes. Kept you waiting, huh? Suddenly, he grows five sizes larger and does a oh. Super Sentai pose and says, time to kick some ass. Are we supposed to interpret this literally? No. Okay. Because he really, I, I didn't remember this at all. Dude. No, I didn't either. I was bamboozled by this moment. Yeah, they they grow to the entire size of the, the yeah. screen. Uh, His ego is doing the talking here. Shit gets completely out of control because then Kisses does the same thing. She does yeah. her like whip, her whip pose, brandishing animation, and exclaims yes. And then Selfie, same thing, does a right on nunchuck practice moves. Anybody who says that Yuffie's decloaking scene in Final Fantasy VII our intermission is over the top can kiss my ass because yeah. have you seen this shit? <laughs> it's, I think what they do is their battle intro poses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's... Uh, but we got one more. Yeah. Fuck me, the red guy does it too. The Moomba <laughs> does it and then he roars. He should be in a bloody roar. <laughs> <laughs> He's Beasterizer. His new name is Lil Beasterizer. I spend 20 minutes rejunctioning everyone and wondering what in the fuck has happened to all my magic. <laughs> he probably... Uh, uh, it's I prob- think I lost some. Like I combined people or something like that, and I lost. Yeah, 100. I do that sometimes, and and just like it, it, it will combine things until it hits a hundred, and then leave the rest over there. Eventually, you're gonna have a full, fully stocked six party thing. Yeah, probably, I hope. After all this shit's over with. After I get out of the menus, a voice is heard. It's Man A, and he can be heard saying, "Is this cell the cell with the uncooperative prisoners?" Mm. Mean guy tells him, "Yeah, this is it. Please give him something to really complain about." Man B pushes back. He wonders if they should be picking on prisoners so soon after getting transferred here. Man A yells at him to be quiet and just to let him handle this. The cops are about to beat some ass, Chris. Yep. Mean guy then saunters in and tells who that were the prisoners they were talking about. Oh, it's Lieutenant Biggs and Private Wedge. Shit. Shit. Zell recognizes the names. Yes, and their ranks are different now. Yes. Like, but my two big boys walk up, and then Zell, Selfie, and Biggs, and Wedge all scream in unison because they all recognize <laughs> Yeah. The, Biggs then tells us that they'll teach us the lesson that they should have taught us earlier. Their salt and pepper asses. Yes. <laughs> he says that it might seem cowardly to fight unarmed prisoners, but he hopes we appreciate their position. He says it's a dog-eat-dog, dog, and then our stumbles. Gang. Yeah. And sees us doing our battle poses because we have weapons. Yeah. Mean guy immediately runs away like any cop would. Yeah. Wedge notes that we're fully armed and Biggs. Sir. Can't believe this shit. He wonders how this could have happened, but then he says, ah, hell with it. Let's go, Wedge. Don't be afraid, plays. Not even boss music. Battle start. Yeah, they've been demoted to non-bosses. Steel giant. Of course. And uh, during the battle, Biggs says that he was demoted because of us. He's only a a lieutenant now. But Eric, Eric yeah. these, aren't uh-huh. bo- these aren't bosses. These aren't bosses, but they have something very useful for us, Chris. They do. They have reflect. Haste and regen. And fire. Fire. Fira? Fira? Yeah. Haste and regen. Yeah. They've got lots of good stuff. I, I don't... I was trying to juice these guys, and I kept failing my draws over and over again. That happened to you? Yeah. It may have something to do with the level. Because I think when you're a lower level than the enemy... Because if it, it, th- there's a good chance that some of your party members here are, like, below level 20. Mm-hmm. But they may... I think they are, like... Can spawn between twenty and twenty six. Okay, or something but if you're nature. if you're too low, it won't let you take their spells. It, it's harder to do. Okay, that, that happened. The, the percent that, chance is low. Yeah, I see. That happened to me with like Diablos, I think, because uh, because it, I don't know, I don't know about you, but in my game, like Squall is like twelve levels higher than everybody yeah, else. Yeah, that's the way it's going for me too. It's weird. So these guys aren't bosses, but I scan them, and we're gonna do the scan game oh, great. anyway. Yeah, so, no, perfect. Because since these are you know these are our, our, our unique kind of guys, and they all have their unique scan things. So first, I scanned Wedge. Which one's true, Eric? Is it number one? Demoted along with Biggs for his part in the Dole Communication Tower operation. Application for leave was denied by Biggs. Is it number two? Demoted along with Biggs for his part in the Dole Communication Tower operation. Tried to go AWOL but was captured during his escape. 
Or is it number three? Demoted along with Biggs for his part in the delay communication tower operation. Unfortunately, still works under Biggs. First one. I'm sorry, Eric. That's not correct. The correct answer is demoted along with Biggs for his part in the delay communication tower operation. Unfortunately, still works under Biggs. Biggs. So a nice little bound together. Zinger in there. Yeah. In the scan. Word arrangements. Next, I scan Biggs with my scan spell. I scanned him. Which one's correct, Eric? Is it? He, number one, he was a major during the Dole Communication Tower operation, but was demoted after the operation failed. Hates Wedge. Number two, he was a major during the Dole Communication Tower operation, but was demoted after the operation. Hates Seed. Or number three, he was a major during the Dole Communication Tower operation, but was demoted after the operation failed. Hates everyone. Gotta, ah, uh, Hates man. Wedge, Seed, or everyone. Yeah, Wedge. Hates Wedge. No, there's no animosity for the boys. He hates everyone. Like Bruce Willis in the edit of Die Hard 3. I'm sorry, Eric. You're 0 for 2. Your record is worse than Cypher's is against Squall. Oh, man. So. Which one is it? Uh, it's he hates Seed. Damn it. So, there we go. That killed Wedge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I actually killed him, but I, I did injure him deeply. Uh, after beating Biggs up a bit, he says they're just getting started, despite Wedge being dead yeah, also. Yeah, being dead. Uh, he begins casting Thundara. As I knock him out, he asks what rank is below Lieutenant. Yeah. Uh, also, I mugged a regen ring from this asshole. Nice. And it has the ability to give a GF the HP plus 20% ability. Give your girlfriend more HP. I yes. I love it. Yeah, it's, everyone needs more HP. As they're laid the fuck out on the floor, Biggs says dot. Wedge says gua. Gua. Chris, will we see our beautiful boys again? I think we have to, right? I, I don't think, know. I don't know. I mean, they could just die here in this Salt prison. and Pepor. They are, like you said, they're 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 going to sh- they're they're yeah. going to they're comical. The Shaker Brothers. They're not going to show up only twice. They're going to show up at least three times. I think. Mm. I hope at least. After we leave, Big starts to stand up. He says, D- "Don't think you can just walk out." Then he says, "Ugh." Yeah. Fade to black. Eric, are we? Are we? Are Bigs we at- and Wedge are dead as shit, but also alive. We've got our weapons. Squall has been freed by mysterious creatures. Cypher has big dreams. Where the fuck is Irvine? They have Renoa. We have to get out of this prison that is surely not drills in a desert. No, of course it can't be. Uh, and that's all for this episode. We'll get back to being in prison in the next episode, and hopefully we'll break out. And hopefully we don't have to skin any cats, our Moombas, or whatever. And wear their skin. Wear it. Skinwalkers. It's gross. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on July 12th, 2021. Thank you, Mark. Shepard. For the music. Oh, well, yes, thank you. And find us on Twitter at RetroAmnesiaPod. And if you like us, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash RetroAM. Get early access, bonus episodes, miniseries, voting rights, stereo mix, and access to the real net on Discord. Email us at podcast at gmail. Email us at podcast at RetrogradeAmnesia.com. I actually updated it on the fucking screen and I still got it wrong. Until next time, Eric. Desertprison.dump. I dreamt I was a moron. Okay. Hey, what's up? I'm Chris with uh, shitchuggers.com here to talk about the shit cast. Let's talk about chugging shit. Chris, what's the last color of your shit you chugged? Green, beautiful, thank you. For me, it was a brown. Let's go back to Lenny. Lenny, what's the color of the shit you chugged? Oh, it's grass purple. Thank you, Lenny. All right. And we've got Dale. Dale on line three. Dale, tell us about the color. Oh, it's color. Fifteen. What's that, Dale? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, Dale, get it. Get, I thought you were screening these. Get this guy off the line. Great. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm sorry. Yeah, about, I'm, just, so, I'm, just I'm, here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about all that. I don't know. What, I don't know what's happening with the shit. As long as we're recording audio. Yeah, as long as we're recording audio, it's fine. Right. Um, hey, uh, yeah. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast about. No, that's not how it goes. He he's being uh fucking shit. What's the word? Uh, disc- Laguna. Uh- Squall kind of hangs his head, like getting all that out really took effort. Like he's being. No, oh, no, I messed up. He continues, uh, fuck. Rivals plays back, Rivals, Rivals, Rivals.com, four-star athlete. As we enter the, bu- <clears throat> what was that noise? As we enter the, bu- as we. Did you just do a uh, Metal Gear <laughs> call <laughs> reference? <laughs>
What was that noise? No, when I inhaled, it like made a noise and it was weird. Because you said, what was that noise? Just like those stupid genome soldiers <laughs> say, what was that? What was that noise? I know. You internalized it and you're just doing it Fuck. automatically. <laughs> fucked yeah. up, dude. Mm. <laughs> My entire existence is broken now. 